We're back with 18, lines 417 to 421, part of it. Now Aeneas and the Sibyl are going to meet Cerberus. Gerberus, haikin gains latratu regna trifauci, persona tad verso recumbans imanis in antro. Cui vates horere, videns iam cola colubris, Mele soporatet medicatis frugibus ofam. Obicit. And then we'll do that part later in the next video. Cerberus is the subject here. Kerberus, the three headed dog. And he is ingans. Ingans is a third declension. Adjective, huge Cerberus. Personat, resounds, or echoes, the word sonat, to sound, he resounds. And then take this pair, part of it, I, I see this pair is going with the direct object. Cer huge Cerberus resounds through haik regna, these kingdoms. Or he makes, you know, he makes these kingdoms echo. He resounds through. I'm taking that pair as through, as, a, as if it's a preposition that's detached from the verb. Through these kingdoms. And how does he do it? Latratu, trifauci. With, this is ablative, so we say with, with his three-throated barking. A really nice expression there with his trifauci latratu, with his three throated barking. And trifauci does have a bit of an automatopoeia to it. It sounds like barking. Latratu la too is automatopoeic, so it's nice to have this latratu trifauci. Sounds like Kerberos is barking. Arverso recumbans imane sinatro. Reclining. That modifies Cerberus. It's a present active participle from recumbo, recumbere. Reclining imanis, huge. We had that Cerberus was huge up here, ingens. Now we have the word imanis here. He, reclining, huge, in antro adverso. In the opposite cave. In the opposite cave. A nice chiasm here, chiastic structure, A-B-B-A, and uh, this is like the facing cave, or it's on the opposite bank. So they get across the river, and now they're confronted with this. One more time. Huge Cerberus resounds through these kingdoms with his three-throated barking, reclining huge, of huge size, in the opposite cave. Cui vates horere videns iam cola colubris mele soporatet medicatis frugibus ofam obicit. To whom, this is a dative, to whom, and the cui, the antecedent of cui is Cerberus, meaning Cerberus, to whom the vates subject, the prophetess, Widens, seeing, that goes with wates, present active participle from wideo, seeing now his cola, his necks, and this is a true poetic plural, well, true plural actually, because he does have three necks, seeing his necks now, horere, to bristle, to bristle, or to shudder, colubris, with snakes, with snakes, plural from colubere, it's a second declension. One more time, to whom the prophetess, seeing now his necks to bristle with snakes. Cerberus apparently has snakes for hair, for his mane here. And so his, the snakes in his mane bristle. Horere. 
this is really seems to be an indirect statement here. Weed ends, a verb of the head, seeing his necks to bristle, or seeing that his necks bristle. So you have a verb of the head, an accusative, this is a neuter plural, by the way, and then an infinitive, an indirect statement construction. Seeing now his necks to bristle with snakes, albicit, tosses him, or throws him, and that's where the idea of the dative comes in here. This, the prophetess tosses to him, to Cerberus. So he's an indirect object. To him, and then here's the direct object, an ofam, soporatum, a drugged cake. An ofam, a cake, drugged. And how was it drugged, or made sleepy, or made drowsy? Sopor is sleep. A cake made drowsy, melle, with honey, et medicatis frugibus, and with medicated or drugged frugibus. You could say fruit, but really it means grain. Frug fruges are any types of fruits of the earth, such as fruits, vegetables, grain, so I would think it's more of a grain this cake is made out of. She tosses to him a drugged cake, or let's say it like this, a cake drugged with honey and medicated grains. This is to put Cerberus to sleep and so they can get past. I'll go ahead and do that sentence one more time. To whom the prophetess, seeing now his necks to bristle with snakes, tosses to him, right, a cake drugged with honey and with medicated grains.